here and now, here we are. Okay, Palestine is in a state of revolution and counter-revolution. You know, I looked uh, at a, a video of the Stalingrad, you know, film made by um, Mosk, uh, Mosti uh, video, you know, the, the uh, Red Army video. Uh, uh, and it was incredible, you know, seeing that they showed, you know, the defense of Stalingrad in which, yes. you know, the superior military force encircled, you know, the city, and yet they managed to attack and repulse the invasion. And I was thinking, you know, if the, Israel ever tries to invade Gaza City, that it would turn into a Stalingrad for Israel, because they couldn't, you know, withstand, you know, the force of a determination against a bunch of, you know, conscripted youth, you know, who don't even want to be there. You know, I was listening to one of the military commentators. His name is Scott Ritter. He used to be a Marine, ex-Marine Corp. And he says what the Israeli doing is stupid. He, he said, reducing Gaza to rubbles, okay? And they think they're going to go inside with their tanks. They don't know that the rubbles. <laughs> and on, on, it will be excellent for, uh, you know, urban warfare. <laughs> that, that's what happened to the Nazis. The Nazis, um, they reduced most of Stalingrad to rubble. And actually, there was one of the generals told uh, the Hitler not to bomb Stalingrad because we will have a hard time taking it over. He said, oh, no, you don't know what you're doing. we are got to do that. So what they did, the same thing for Volgograd, okay, uh, which is called, uh, I think, uh, I don't Stalingrad. Know yeah. yeah. So basically what the Israelis have already done uh, actually, they uh, gave, uh, militarily speaking, I'm talking, of course, uh, the, the, um, the advantage to the Palestinian freedom fighters to um, swallow them, basically, mm -hmm. crush them, because uh, you can't do much with your tanks and, uh, and, um, and uh, APCs, okay, an armored uh, personal carrier, in an urban that is rubble. And those people, they use these guys have uh, coordinates and um, RBJs, mm -hmm. and they are uh, they coming from the tunnels, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know. So the Israelis will have to to face uh, many uh, many casualties, huge casualties, the Zionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's. Uh, that's uh, too bad for them. Uh, they asked for it. They, mm -hmm. they, they are. Uh, I don't think. I like it's been fourteen days since the heroic uh, breakdown of the ghetto, the ghetto uh, 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 doors, or uh, yeah. so. So and the Zion has been saying we are going to go in inland. Uh, on land, and every time there's one day they said the weather is not good, it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> the other day they said, Oh, the United States. The, other, the third day they said, It's been 14 days, they haven't got in yet. My hunch, I'm not a military guy, they're not going in, they gotta continue their terrorist blitz on Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, back to Canada, and of course, United States and the rest of the West. Shame on the media. The media is mm. is all enlisted in in uh, working as a propaganda machine to the Zionist enterprise in Palestine, calling. The Palestinians either terrorist or they don't exist. So we are, if we exist, we are terrorists. If we don't exist, we don't exist. You know, my, so, my uncle was called a terrorist by the Nazis because he was a partisan. Of course, of course. Yeah. as they, as as uh, they say, one one person terrorist is another person freedom fighter. So I mean, using the word terrorism, terrorist is a political uh, word, has absolutely no meaning, absolutely. You know, meaning in 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 in, uh, in the revolution, like uh, what we have in Palestine, we have 
a uh, colonial settler uh, enterprise, and we having the people fighting back. On um, those people who were fighting back, according to the colonists and their backers, who are the West, they call us terrorists. So every Palestinian actually is a terrorist. Actually, and in Hebrew, they don't even use that word terrorist. They call chablanim. Chablanim means who they are who come and destroy things, destroyers. That's what they call them. Oh, marauders. It's even worse. Marauders, yeah. Yes. So uh, so everybody is a chiblan or chiblanim. Hmm. So, but that doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't. It's not going to stop us from fighting back hmm. and to regain our freedom and our land. Hmm. Well, yes. I'm looking forward to uh, some kind of a split in the Israel state apparatus. You know, the Zionists uh, must realize you know that they cannot you know save their their project you know if they continue in this way they must realize well, that uh they have to overthrow the king uh king bb you know they have to go yeah well they will he will at this moment they're a bit like a pack of hyenas attacking a prey uh, but when they finish from the prey or the things are stopped finished they will they will go back at each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, eighty percent of Zionist settlers in Palestine believe that Netanyahu bears the responsibility for what happened on October seventh. They gotta they gotta fight among each other. That's for sure. It's it's a given. Hmm. Never in this in the entire history of the so called state of Israel, the Zionist entity ever been uh, uh, ever had such a shock to their life by the attack of the Palestinian freedom fighters when they break through the ghetto and they went into about 20 different settlements including the headquarters of the Gaza army division they went into it they went to the headquarters they grabbed the head of it he is there his name is uh, I think uh, Namrud Aloni the mm. brigadier general. He is in the hand of Hamas. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. very strategic. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So Israel has this policy called the the Hannibal. Uh, yes. Hannibal code or Hannibal uh, doctrine. Doc. Which, you know they don't care about the hostages because you know no, their no, no. liability to the state of the Zionist state. So. <clears throat> So they don't care if, they're, they're not, if they bomb them. Even, you know, of the 200, you know, like prisoners there, you know, uh, in the hands of Hamas, there's uh, 13 who have been killed by the bombings, you know, made by, you know, the actually, military. Actually, yeah. 22 now. Wow. It's 22 uh, prisoners being murdered by the, Amer by the American supplied uh, aircraft uh. to and kill them. So yeah. uh, who murdered them? Yes, it's called the Hannibal Doctrine. That uh, if any soldier or soldiers being caught by the uh, fighters, you direct the fire on all of them. You kill them all. We don't need any quote unquote. They, they already have, you know, a whole group of you know prisoners and Hamas fighters. You know, were killed altogether during that 2014, okay, uh, invasion. They uh, they attacked their own uh, troops. They thought they were under uh, uh, under uh, detention by the freedom fighters in Gaza, uh, and they killed se six soldiers. Oh. But that's the Israelis. They know this. I mean, the the so called civilians. They don't know that their their own children being murdered by their own army, so they will not be uh, swamped with Palestinian prisoners. So they're, they're the, the, even the Zionist soldier's life is becoming uh, useless, has no price to it, a zero price. Yeah. It's as good as, as a Palestinian. Yeah, yeah because, uh, because they are an asset to the Palestinians and not to the Zionist state. The state, exactly. you know, this nation state you know, mentality, this concept, you know, it comes from Hegel. 
you know, I did my whole doctoral thesis about this yeah. concept of the nation state. And it inevitably leads, you know, to a racist, you know, fascist uh, conclusion, you know, because it's based upon the concept of a uh, purity, you know, one nation, one pure nation, and none yes. of them, you know, and any minority nation, that na any nationality is considered like an infection, and they react as if they're an immune system, and they ex try to expel, you know, the Jewish and the Roma peoples, you know, of Europe who are subjected to uh, annihilation because we wouldn't leave, you know, and this exactly. is what trying exactly. to do the Palestinians nation states you know do this sort of thing because one nation yeah, one, one state concept you know it's so monolithic it's incredible once uh, and i think in 19 early 1940s i believe uh somebody said to ben Gurion, okay david ben Gurion, about some bulgarian jews oh yeah who are uh, refusing to return to the promised land and he had he had he had a, a, a still a, you know a, a, a phrase he said that the cows that grazing in the la, in the in the land of Israel is worth to me more than those Jews who are refusing to come to Palestine. Whoa. This is yes, uh, yeah. You know, even he any Jew who doesn't serve. The Zionist entity, enterprise in their own establishment, he's worthless. Yeah. yeah. Despite they they act and behave that oh we are here yeah. to protect yeah. and represent all Jews of the world, but they're not. I've had Zionists tell me that I should have been killed by the Nazis because I'm not a Zionist. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That that goes uh, with uh, what David Ben Gurion said in the early forties about the Bulgarian Jews who refused to. Immigrate and uh, uh, actually, uh, after that, the Nazis took them. Actually, that's what happened. That's what I'm sorry. Uh, those who were going Jews, they were taken by the Nazis to the gas chambers. And when he asked, he, we, he was told about them. He said, These people refused to come to Palestine. Hmm. Okay. And they end up with the Nazis. The cows in, of Eretz Israel is more worth to me than them. They, Basically, they could go to hell. You know, that's that's his his bullshit about, you know, refusing to go to Palestine. You know, only the rich, you know, like Jewish strata, you know, could make it to Palestine. You know, like you just can't, you know, leave if you're living day to day. You know, you need, you know, your job to to be able to eat, you know. you know, Most Jews, most Jews of Europe. Most of the Jews were poor, you know, working class Jewish Bundists, you know. And the Zionists are happy that the Jewish Bundists, you know, working class was all... Eliminated. Most uh, most European Jews refused to go to Palestine, and in principle, not just only being poor and they, they can't afford it is yes. not the point here. The point is most Jews refused the point of going to Palestine. Mm -hmm. Actually, they were prefer to go to to the New World than going to Palestine. Yeah, two million okay. went to the United States. Yeah. So, uh, but after the Second World War. Uh, the complicity of of the the six million issue, uh, never many were driven by fear to run away. Okay, but mm. anyways, that's not the most important thing. I'm talking about Zionism <laughs> was not part of being a Jew. If you if Judaism is a Zionism, most Jews in Palestine in in Europe before the Second World War they would have gone to Palestine, which is not the case. No, it's not the case because the Jewish Bundes, you know, who were the majority of the Jewish people in the working class, yes. wanted to fight against fascism. They wouldn't let fascism pass, you know, like what's the point, you exactly. know, of running away from fascism? It's going to follow you, you know, like, and everybody knew, knew, knew this. Exactly. You know? so, so everybody we, knows, everybody knows the, the incident that, uh, uh, what's his name, Menachem Begin's father, who attacked uh, a Warsaw uh, synagogue with an axe. Because uh, the synagogue was uh, making a funeral to a Zionist. He attacked. He went into the synagogue with an axe to fight. To why? How dare you making a funeral funeral to a Zionist? This is how bad the, the Jews in Poland were opposed to the Nazi, to the Zionists. And that's I think in the 1930s. Wow. You didn't know that? It's known. It's a known fact. Wow. Menahem's father, Menahem Begin's father. He wasn't a Zionist then. He was anti-Zionist. Yeah. He went into a synagogue with an axe. Wow. Because he heard there's a Zionist being prepared for a funeral in the synagogue. 
Yeah, Zionists are considered to be assimilated Christians, basically, you know, because they're following they are, Christian they, they are actually, they church. Are, that is, yeah. They have nothing to do with Judaism yeah. or Jews. That's they're fascist. Right. <clears throat> the problem was that, you know, that after the Holocaust, you know, the Jewish Bund that was leading the Jewish working class was not there anymore, you know, and the Jewish working class of Europe wasn't there anymore. So the Zionists, you know, just cleaned up and they claimed to be speaking on behalf of the Jewish people. And exactly. in the they were given status, you know, as yes. a state, you know. But, you know, real Jewish, you know, people independent, you know, like where my parents were in the refugee camp, you know, in Wetzlar in Germany, you know, they weren't offered, you know, territory of Germany to found a Jewish, you know, like, you know, <laughs> Uh, province or something, you know, like no way, nothing was being offered in terms of land in Europe. Yeah, that's that it was, was the land in the Orient that was being offered, you know, like and only that. There was a big mistake by the the Soviets at that time. The yeah. Jews should have given in in Eastern Europe uh, mm. a homeland mm. that will will be part of of well their own independent uh, entity yeah. to flourish and be part of Europe. Yeah, and the okay. old settlement, you know, the, the ghetto of the Tsarist, you know, uh, empire, that could have been in Jewish there. By Yellow Russia, I think it's called now. It could have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, it could be encompassed that area, part yeah. of Poland, part of uh, even Lithuania. Yeah, okay. that's the whole problem, you know, that the, the, you know, the Marxist, you know, like uh, doctrine, you know, uh, uh, of the early Communist Party, you know, wouldn't allow for national identity, you know, to be. Uh, I know, valid. I know. There's only that class was, but, identity that counted, and yeah, the the the, the Soviets the Soviet screwed up big times the issue of of um, uh, identity and nationalism. They thought they would have to mix and and uh, and uh, mix different nationalities with each other. Uh, that was so stupid. They brought Qatar yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. from the east, put them in the Crimea. They took some <laughs> of the yeah. It was so stupid. It was just yeah. totally. Uh, this concerns awful. you, Steve, as well. You know uh, what? What would you say? Oh, your microphone is muted still. It's from his point, from his... Yeah, uh, he hasn't activated his microphone. Your microphone is not activated. Yeah, he should activate his microphone, yeah. Ah, oh, there. Oh, there, there, there. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, that's um, okay. What I was saying... What I was saying was, I think that um, the only thing I can really comment on, because I'm learning a lot, is about this Hannibal doctrine and why it hasn't been why it hasn't been ruthlessly condemned. Uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I know no, I know of, of no other army in the world that has such a dis uh, such a disdain for its own captured soldiers. Yeah, yeah. That that doctrine right there, or it is soldiers or people captured by their opponent in armed conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it. It's, I, I think it should be the subject of any demonstration. Mm -hmm. We well, have it's, signed. It's, 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 it's even. It's you know goes beyond that. You know, like it's a whole set of mentality. You know, because let let me give you the testimony of. Uh, of a, an uncle of mine, an uncle by marriage, okay? <clears throat> My mother's sister married this uh, this Israeli guy who originally, you know, came from a, a village in Russia that was uh, a, a Jewish village, a shtetl, <clears throat> and all of the inhabitants, you know, were killed except for him. And, he, he, and when he went back there, you know, he's the only one left. So he left, went to Israel and found a new life there and became a soldier in 1956 war. And he admitted to me after we had, you know, many, you know, arguments, you know, at the family Seder at Passover, you know, in the springtime, and I get expelled from the family dinner because of him, he admitted to me later on, you know, that he had been ordered to execute Egyptian prisoners of war, unarmed, who were ordered to take their boots off, who couldn't run away, and he was ordered to execute them, and he did. At the time, he told me about this, you know, I thought it was, you know, like a small number, but then I hear thousands of Egyptian fathers were killed in that yeah. manner, you know, by this guy who's my uncle. I couldn't, you know, like fathom it, you know. And it's Precious. incredible, you know, and, and in the family, you know, I get, you know, blamed for being, 
being, uh, you know, uh, the black sheep of the family or something like this, you know, but this guy, this war criminal is, you know, considered to be legitimate, you know, it's incredible. Well, I, 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 again, I'm just going to say that since we're on the topic of the Hannibal Doctrine, and since I learned, I learned it from you two weeks ago, um, I did not know about this doctrine. I think that anyone opposed to the occupation on the Jewish side, anyone opposed, I think it, I'm not saying only Jewish people should raise this issue, but I think it should be raised by the Jewish people. Yeah. Because it comes from a government that, like, 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 like we talked about previously, this government claims to represent Jewish people. It claims to represent Jewish people all over the world, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. So therefore, how can we? How can you support a government that says if anyone of this nation is taken captive in a war, we we are going to kill you? Yeah. Okay. So that's, I'll I, I mean, that's that's a bit much for me to swallow. Yeah. They've been doing it on the West Bank uh, yeah. for the past years. They don't yeah. take prisoners. They yeah. just shoot uh, young people on the spot, and they yeah. plant next to them a knife or something, and say, "Oh, this guy was about to attack us, and we had to defend ourselves and kill them." But uh, right. it's, right. it's garbage. I, I, yeah. I, I do think, I do think, um, as part of the anti-occupation, anti-war movement, that this this needs to be raised as a crime against humanity and against civility. That we have, it, it, even in warfare, there has to be rules of the game on both sides. And you're telling me that I'm captured, and I'm if I'm captured as a member of your society, and I'm taken prisoner, that I should be killed by the killed by you. That just it just it, to me it's just a good way of exposing what they what they are really about. Yes, and that, that's that. I when I when I go back to the Jewish community center. And they won't be able to stop me. I'll, I'll raise that with anybody you know who objects objects to my presence there. I say, oh yeah, do. what are you doing here? You know, like you're the one you know is favoring you know the killing of Jewish uh, prisoners of war, you know, and and uh, I'm trying to stop that from happening. And yet, uh, you know, I'm supposed to uh, you know be uh, subordinated to you, or whatever you want. You know, I'm like no, they're not going to let you know like the dominate the Jewish people anymore. I think that we're, we're going to have a breakthrough here. And the Zionist, you know, control over the Jewish mentality is going to be mm -hmm. cracked wide open here, and we're going to walk in. And as far as the media concerned, I'm so happy that we have Al Al Jazeera and other uh, other alternative media that are really, if it wasn't for those, if it wasn't for those media, uh -huh. those alternative sources, at least in the at least in the United States. Yeah. All we have is the propaganda of the New York Times, the Washington Post, mm -hmm. the different um, news news media, the Associated Press, you know, United, United Press International. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's just simply no, there's no alternate view, and of course, no one, no one will say, well, the Palest historically the Palestinians have a right to self defense, and including the right to attack their 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 enemy. That's not going to be heard. But I'm just talking about the facts on the ground. Mm. The facts on the ground, because as I'm talking to you, I've seen some alerts from Al Jazeera as far as rocket attack. I mean, air air attacks on on Gaza, et cetera. So I'm just very happy to have an alternative point of view because it's not the, all we see is the propaganda of Israel is the best thing since sliced bread, and and Hamas is six six next sits on the left hand of Satan. Hmm. That's 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 the view that we're seeing. Wow. Yeah, but you know, Russia today and uh, Al Jazeera were pro pro Zionist at first. They were considering you know Israel to be the victim, and uh, that lasted about three days, and then they yes. switched over. Oh, sure. You know, like I'm happy, I'm happy to change that view because because uh, Israel has never been the victim. Yeah. Really? No, Israel is not a victim. Israel is is uh, is embodiment of the, the victimizers. Uh, it is the seeds of fascism were laid in 1948, and this is the fruit coming now. You know, in the Netanyahu government, yeah, the yeah. cabinet, which even included Blinken. You know, even Biden. You know, joined the uh, emergency. You know, like a uh, cabinet. You know, meeting. You know, for 
for hours, you know, they discuss strategy together, you know, they're in this together, you know, this is, you know, a major offensive against uh, the Orient as a whole. They don't care about any other, you know, like uh, opposition in the Orient, as long as they have the support of the West. But now they're isolated in the Security Council. So, you know, like, uh, but they don't care. They don't seem to care, you know, like, because they got the support back home. Nothing's pushing them to change their position. Except for well, the Jewish um, occupation of the capital, but, you know. I, I, I want to raise one of the points. It was something that I think we should focus on. Why is the the presence of this forward strike force, of, of this carrier and the Marines, um, that has been done to supply to, to provide military support for Israel. Mm-hmm. They aren't there just feeling at the oh hey we went on a little trip uh, mm-hmm. we're in the Middle East what do you know oh, hey man look there's 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 Tel no they're going to use that whatever uh, armaments are on that on that carrier whatever airplanes whatever cannons whatever soldiers they will be inserted into this into this war in some way. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it was I mean, I, at one point that they were going to go in, you know, the American Marines were going to go in and right. rescue the hostage, you know, the, the so-called hostages, prisons of war. Okay, they're going to attack, you know, where, you know, they don't even know, you know, like. Right. Well, just, they can't just, find them. No. Oh, they're yeah, deep I, under the ground. <laughs> they're deep under the ground. Nobody knows where they are. If they know, even they know, they can't go into the these tunnels. They're they'll lucky be to just... be in the tunnels because they're not being bombed on the surface. Like exactly, all the uh, the, the initially there's 22 of them being murdered by the Israeli airstrikes. Yeah, and uh, they were in safe homes, and these safe homes were, you know, they're being bombed. And they murdered them. So basically, they were not in a military installation. So therefore, uh, their blood lies squarely on the hands of the Israelis and the Americans. Mm-hmm. Whether they those twenty-two prisoners of war were Americans or dual citizens or Zionists, uh, doesn't matter. It's it's it matter. it's who killed them is the bear, the bearer of the responsibility of their death, mm-hmm. not Hamas for mm-hmm. sure. But did you hear that two Americans were released by Hamas? Yes, sir. They, yes. A mother and her daughter. I thought the daughter is a young daughter. No, that's actually the mother. She looks in her mid 40s and her daughter is about 20 years old. I think they are they're Jewish volunteers from the United States coming to to spend the summer in the kibbutzim. Uh-huh. But they're not Israeli citizens by any stretch of imagination. But they're Zionists. Yeah. Nevertheless. Yeah. The Palestinians, they showed that we will, this is a token of peace or, or, or who we are. Uh, we'll let those Zionists who came to our land, squattering our land, mm. to work in the Kibbutz team, okay? Mm. And they let them go. They were, I saw the, the video. They're mm. looking in good health after 14 days. Yeah. They look like they're well fed. They're not being touched. Mm. And I'm sure, I am 100% sure that our freedom fighters, they will never touch these people, anybody. Yeah. Steve, you wanted to say something? Yes, I want to comment on this because this is something I'm just learning again. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I'm, I'm going to say it in a way that's, that's respectful. The United States has never kept a treaty it didn't want to break. Hmm. I True. send my I send my um, olive branch of brotherhood to those militants who who released these prisoners. I do. However, do not expect any res- any reciprocity from the United States. No, 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 no. It was not. It, it, yeah, they yeah, they no. did issue a communique. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, don't expect any reciprocity, no. any gesture every because they, they, it's just not in the nature of the wild beast to be to be decent toward potential prey i appreciate My, the, i appreciate the release that's nice that's really good yeah 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 interpretation yeah. i have yeah. interpretation to this I think that's my own hunch my own interpretation nobody i is not based on information that the release of these two prisoners okay was in uh, uh, in relation to allowing an aids today aid today from Egypt. So that's what it is. Said, okay, uh, show us, give us a token of, of gesture. I will let that go in. 
They thought that Hamas will not do that. I said, okay, here are two Americans. We'll release them. Tomorrow you let the aid in. And actually, now I was checking in. the aid. Some of the aid went in, but I don't know how okay. much. All right. Okay, good. But, All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at first they talk about 12 trucks and then 20 trucks, you know. What they need is 600 trucks, you know, like... Yes, uh, that's true. And uh, during normal times, you know, they only allowed in 100 trucks a day into yes. the whole Gaza, you know, from... Uh, Remember, they're putting people of Gaza on diet. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a very uh, diet. Yeah, no diet, yes. yeah. Yeah, you don't know, that. Yeah. actually, one of the... the a general of the Israeli civil administration uh, uh, department, which is uh, an army dealing with the Palestinian. He said it, like he said a few years ago, we are putting, when he asked why you just allowing such amount of food to go into Gaza, he said, we are monitoring the calories of each person taking in Gaza and we're putting the Gaza on diet. This is, this is what said to the media. If you dig it up, you'll find it. Hmm. Okay, we're it. talking about a true concentration camp. Yeah, a, a organization. Yeah. This is how it is, and the world is sitting there, sitting on their behind, watching, hmm. and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And when the the Palestinian break through the ghetto walls, everybody said, "Oh no! How dare you!" Hmm. You know, yeah. as if the history started on October 7th. Sorry, buddies, but it's been mm -hmm. way, way before. This is history, history, yeah. This is a new historic epoch, yeah. This is a revolt of the whole third world. This is an international, yes. like in a permanent revolution sequence, a whole international revolution has happened. Yes. But I have a minute or two I left. You know, so. you, i, I got to uh, finish up. Uh, what I can say, the world, in, uh, in Palestine in particular, is before October 7th is not like after. Yeah. Things will change. Israel has to yield, has to capitulate. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Okay. So uh, look for, looking forward to the demonstration tomorrow. You know, it's going to be an international demonstration as well. It's going to be millions, you know, like, you know, nobody's even, you know, been able to calculate the number of people that have been demonstrating internationally. But it must be in the millions. Yemeni protesters, they look like a million people already, you know, just by themselves, you know. That's right. And they've offered, you know, to march, you know, to the to the borders of Palestine. You know, so we'll see. Okay.